I wanted to start with the traditional royal guard, but I had to go to the... Mm -hmm. Hi, Misha here, and we haven't done a lineup of Star Wars characters in a minute, so let's return to the 6-inch Black Series and look at some guards and uh, otherwise kind of specialized police forces spanning from the end of the Republic through the Empire and the First Order. Because I'm going to be honest, the First Order concept I don't really care for, but some of the designs are actually kind of neat. But I've got 10 of them lined up here. They're going to be very similar because for, in the real world, they're mostly made from the same mold. And in universe, they're kind of variants of the same guard. For example, we have the guard up here that is uh, the Imperial Guard. Apparently he lost his force bike during the night because I laid these out last night. Oh, well. And then we have the Senate Guard. There are minor differences. And then we have more of the Senate Commando look here. I have changed a few of the guns on these just to suit my taste. I also have the First Order Executioner because he strikes me more as a guard or whatever than a combat trooper. Then we have the Elite Praetorians. Kind of fascinating. I actually do really like these. And then finally we have the Sith Trooper. Specifically the Sovereign Guard because he has the, uh, the blade slash laser weapon. But we'll get to that. I just thought this would be fun. And uh, visually, maybe a treat for you. Here's the light. They are red. Well, except for these. They, those are blue. But everyone else is red, pretty much. Well, except for him. He's mostly kind of white and black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, no. This seemed interesting. Well, let's dive in. I thought about starting with the uh, traditional red royal guard, but I have to really begin at the beginning here. The... Republic Senate Guard. This uh, six inch figure is from that uh, Guards four pack. And um, has received a little criticism, but I actually think it's okay considering what it's meant to be. The Senate Guard is ancient, thousands of years old, a police agency. It's not considered a military. It has primary jurisdiction over the Senate District in the capital city, Galactic City, Coruscant. But it works alongside the Coruscant Police, because it is a police force, primarily. At least it was up until the Clone Wars. They wore blue robes. They were meant to be ceremonial. They had armor that was meant to be Inspired by the Mandalorian Neo-Crusader. Neo As you can see here, he carries a little blaster pistol. And his primary weapon is this here. It's considered a uh, Mark II Paladin rifle, at least as of the Clone Wars. This is a heavy gun, about 7 kilograms has an adjustable retractable stock, semi-auto or burst fire modes. It has a stun setting. It also has what they call a stun prod for riot control. It has about a 300 meter range and is quite powerful. Even though it's intended to be a ceremonial weapon, it is also useful and did start to see more use during the Clone Wars. Now, the reason some kind of don't like this figure, when we first meet the Senate Guard in Phantom Menace, they don't look quite like this. They uh, have an open faceplate with kind of a plume, a crest on top of their head. This version here, though, is more like we see in Revenge of the Sith. They enclose the faceplate going to kind of black, the plume gets replaced with this kind of solid crest. And just overall, they become more military because they've been in years of the Clone War. They keep their ceremonial robes, though. 
their duties were to uh, protect senators and the chancellor, at least originally. And they were either taken from raw recruits, which would receive a, receive a full four-year training program, or police agencies from other planets, and in which case they would get a truncated training program because they already knew the basics of policing. The uh, Senate guards were known to be very good forensic investigators, so basically CSI Star Wars, and they had advanced labs, so they weren't just ceremonial. In fact, there was a special subdivision called the Senate Commandos that was much more military, combat-oriented, off-world-oriented. But even in their ceremonial guys, they would go off-world to protect senators, VIPs, what have you. They would start off as privates, and they had the great task of going to headquarters, which was again in Galactic City, processing prisoners and doing paperwork. Yay. When they were promoted to corporal, they were assigned to individual senators or VIPs. They get promoted to sergeant. They get the joy of handing out duty schedules to the corporals. And they may sometimes be assigned to protect higher-ranking senators or more important VIPs. And they would answer to the sergeant of arms Sergeant at Arms, which would uh, conduct routine stuff throughout the uh, Senate. Then you get promoted into the officers' ranks, like lieutenant, and they would command a uh, small group of two to four guards. Then you go up to commander, and they would command a full squad of six to eight. And then finally, at the top was captain of the guard who answered directly to a senate committee so they were very much involved in politics and while they were respected this did lead to corruption and nepotism it became almost an inherited rank even though in the past they had a reputation for very good policing by the clone wars period traitors and bribing even senators because one of their also jobs wasn't just to protect senators but also to monitor for any untoward activity but more and more were taking taking the grift now you'd think that they were dissolved in 19 bby with the end of the republic and you'd be correct but their demise was actually far far in the past actually going back even before the clone wars now we can talk about the Emperor's Royal Guard. Although originally they were known as just simply the Red Guard and were basically red-clad versions of the Senate Guard, initially founded around 28 BBY to protect Chancellor Palpy. They were picked more for loyalty to him, although some would be drawn from the Senate Guard. This one's holding a so-called force pike, a melee weapon, also kind of a ceremonial weapon. The Republic guys were also trained in these, so it's not just with these, but you mostly see the Republic guys with the uh, paladin rifle there. And you mostly see these guys with the pikey pike. They too have a little blaster pistol you can tell it's the same mold, but different head. Kind of neat. And they have the armor underneath. These were originally picked from the guard, and then some could be clones, and then later from the Stormtrooper Corps, they were picked based on very strict height, weight requirements, intelligence, military prowess, but above all, um, you know, loyalty. And they would go through a rigorous training program, usually about 40 students in a class, and they would pair off because we usually see these guys operating in pairs. And no one knew how many Royal Guards were actually in service, but a good estimate might have been 400 because they weren't just there to guard Palpy. They uh, would be sent to guard installations, 
or protect VIPs, although protect and spy were often interchanged. The DC Royal Guards, for example, with Thrawn, around 14 BBY. And uh, with Vader throughout, including in his castle in Rogue One. But after 19 BBY, they would be switch from being called the Red Guard to the Imperial Royal Guard. They had uh, good armor underneath the robes. They could also shed the robes and put on a different helmet and go into the field. And they were trained on uh, different weapons besides. They um, would continue to serve even after Palpy's death, protecting other Imperial officials until the end of the Empire. But they were primarily loyal to the Emperor, so when he died, a lot of them did leave. Here's another version. Uh, Connor Jax or Carcanus, people debate, but uh, he's from the comics, but he has a different cape instead of the robes. You can see the armor a little better. And he comes with this uh, melee bladed weapon, which they were trained in electric vibro weapons it's a star wars thing basically if you see a blade and it's not a lightsaber of course they usually have energy conduction there to keep them sharp because they were supposed to be the best of the best they would be routinely rotated into the field for combat duties they would not really intermingle much with the stormtroopers but they also wouldn't serve in big groups they would basically go in in little special operations sometimes leading stormtrooper groups you know, again, to keep their combat skills sharp. And they would also uh, serve as kind of assassins and sneaky people. Interestingly, while some would stay in the guard, it became a lifelong thing. Even getting promoted into higher and higher secret orders. Others would rotate in, serve, and then uh, get promoted and rotate out back to the regular imperial military so it wasn't necessarily the end of one's career some would just serve and move out so while they were known to be extremely loyal even taking the emperor's word as gospel it wasn't like they were brainwashed they weren't necessarily that deep uh, hence kind of the what this figure is supposed to represent in the comics i wasn't planning on picking this guy up but i found him very inexpensive like 10, 12 bucks. He is neat. This cape is, again, different styling and um, thicker. And this blade is kind of neat. It kind of reminds me of what we're going to see in a minute with the Praetorians. But it goes to show you they were trained, but mostly in melee weapons. Although once in a while, they would uh, grab a blaster. But that was really the job of a kind of a separate division. So let's go back to the end of the Clone Wars. Meet the Clone Shock Trooper. These formed during the Clone Wars as elite security forces, I'll, I'll say. Military police, basically, for Coruscant. And um, they originally wore standard Phase 2 clone armor, just with the red and they had a little pauldron to denote rank on their shoulder. And while they would carry DC-15As and Ss, they're, they're really recognizable for their use of the long rifle. Because often they would be standing duty or doing patrols, and much like with the Paladin with the Senate, it's more effective and intimidating in that sense. So it's a standard gun. And this is, figure is pretty much your standard Phase 2 clone, just with red markings and a admittedly kind of different pauldron. It's a little different mold. I don't know. He's from Bad Batch, but we do see these at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Because whereas the Red Guard, soon to be Royal Guard, mostly defended in installations or on planet, when uh, the Chancellor, soon to be Emperor, well I guess he was technically Emperor by that time, would go off-world. Typically, the shock troopers here would be his individual protectors. 
so they were extra trained they were still taken from the clones at this point and it said that their armor was a little more blaster and impact resistant you know higher grade armor basically so they got the the the, the top shelf equipment and these are the more military guards the more in the field the less ceremonial and uh, primarily charged with uh, Coruscant and wherever the Palpy would go. Yeah, these were the original. I just thought it was a neat figure. Picked it up when the uh, Bad Batch series came out. What do you think? Moving right along to one I just picked up. Well, a few weeks ago, but that's pretty close in my time. This is the direct successor to the clone shock trooper. This is the Imperial shock trooper. Now, whereas the clone shock trooper was seen on screen, this is just from video games and conjecture, but it makes sense. As the uh, shock troopers would get newer armor, we would switch over from phase two clone to the uh, stormtrooper armor. He's uh, got the regular E11 on his hip there, or butt, whatever it is. And even though this figure came with a DLT-20A, which is something they used, I put a uh, DLT-19 in his hands because they also were issued these. I just have a kind of Lucy sitting in there. I don't know. I thought he looked kind of neat with a longer blaster, especially considering the kind of Senate guards long and then the uh, Shock Troopers 15A. But yeah, he would use quite a few things and... Originally, the uh, Imperial Shock Troopers here, or Shock Storm Troopers, were made up of clones, but soon they would be made up of recruits, and it really is the same unit as this guy, just uh, with newer equipment, and would continue to guard the Emperor primarily when he would go off-world, or guard special installations that were important to him. So he's got the red accents on his armor, at least on the front. And as usual, it's just a Stormtrooper body. But why not? Kind of completes a, a series here. But what about other parts of the Imperial government? They need protecting too. Meet the Imperial Senate Guard. Now this figure gets some flack too, because basically it's a Royal Guard, sans robes, but in blue. And uh, he is from some video games like Force, Force, Force Unleashed. Although similar blue versions have appeared way back even in the Nintendo days. I forget which game it was, but one of the Nintendos had kind of a blue guard. Yet again, I found him for a good price, so I picked him up. That's kind of where I do with a lot of these. Is uh, not in a huge hurry to get them, but if the, the right price pops up, I will. Now he comes with a uh, kind of lightsaber staff thing. I'm not really crazy about it. So I gave him a E11D. I thought it was very fitting. This is the same blaster like uh, the Death Troopers use. I think, it, I think it looks good. It even fits the crook of his arm really well. Hello. And he's got his little uh, little blaster here that pretty much all of them do. This is the same little sidearm blaster we see with the patrol trooper and the uh, the uh, Scout Trooper. It's the, what is it? SC-17, SC-17, SR-17. I should have looked before. I've talked about it in the past. Neat little blaster. Not very practical based on where the trigger is, but oh well. But yeah, he would primarily take over senatorial duties from his Republic counterpart. And he would defend the Imperial Senate, but he also act just as an enforcer for the Emperor's will and a spy. These guys were primarily taken from the elements of the now dissolved Republic guard that were seen to be loyal to Palpatine or bribable. Later on, as that first generation aged out, they would be taken from recruits. But yeah, their primary loyalty was not to the Senate or even the Imperial government, but of course to Palpatine. And they were more combat-oriented. Protecting the Senate, sure, but also protecting installations, for example. We see them protecting at least a version of these called the Sentinels. We see them protecting the 
former Jedi Temple in game. But I think, yeah, if you're going to have a royal guard in red for the Emperor, you're going to have someone who protects the Senate. That's what we have here. That said, of course, their unit was disbanded in 0 BBY when the Emperor dismissed the Imperial Senate right before the Rebel Alliance dismissed the Death Star. So they would be dissolved, probably going back into either Stormtroopers or the Royal Guard or what have you. And that's what we have for the guards we see in the Imperial Era. So now we need to fast forward a bit. Now we move to the Elite Praetorian Guard. And we have three figures actually featuring all four primary weapons. And they were all into melee. Yeah, so this guy here has in his hands a interesting weapon we'll talk more about called the Balleri Chain Whip. Doesn't look like a whip right now, but it is. This is called a Vibro or Electro Valge. Valge? Don't know. This guy up here. No, sorry. I think this is, sorry. This is the Bicento, I believe. The somewhat shorter one. This is the Valge or Electro Valge weapon, the bigger one. Could be wrong. And then finally, our last guy. Apparently, he doesn't like trees because this is a Vibro Arbor blade. So, it's for cutting trees. That one I know. <laughs> so, yeah, three figures, four weapons. Let's talk kind of about these because I actually do kind of like these. We'll do my little present arms here. This is the standard figure from the Black Series with the standard helmet. And this is the weapon he comes with. Kind of a compact, choppy thing. It, uh was used by the first and second guards. There were only eight elite Praetorian guards, and they operated in pairs. So four pairs working in eight, protecting Snoke. To be fair, if he'd listened to them, he probably would have been alive. But, you know, just like how Palpy dismissed his guards, Snoke held his back. So this is the standard one he comes with. This weapon is a vibro weapon. It's electrically charged powered with plasma. It can fight. It, it take a lightsaber hit and fight back. It has a compact power cell. It's a little lighter than the next blade we'll look at. In his other hand is not actually the one he comes with, but I thought it fitted him well. This is the, uh, the whip. It actually has two modes right now. It's in rapier mode. Where it's a little pokey thing. It can also be snapped and turned into a chain whip, electro chain whip. They can wrap up people or lightsabers and do whip things. Basically Indiana Jones. But yeah, this is our standard figure in the series with the plastic robes and this here helmet and this uh, articulated armor. His elbows do move, but I typically don't move mine because I don't want to stress it. Our next guy is actually the Amazon Special that I wanted for a while, but I held off until I found him for a good price. He's called the Praetorian Guard with Heavy Blade, and this is a heavy blade. Same basic concept, it's powered, in fact it has quite a large power cell, probably more life in it than the other one. And this weapon was originally made for riot control, crowd control, and a little more ceremonial too. It can work as a kind of a staffy staff. Interestingly, even though he has the bigger blade, this figure also does come with that whip on the in the other guy's hand. So, if you find them both for the same price, which you're probably not going to, this one is more expensive generally. He uh, is probably the neater buy, and he has an interesting helmet. It, I like the front look, the little angle, kind of the screen door face, very old school armor, but the back's a little odd looking. These guys' armor, it's said to have wiring in it for electrics. First off, it's said these plates are heavy, uncomfortable, and they can be powered 
on temporarily to kind of act as a personal, not exactly shield, but they can produce a heavy magnetic field that they can deflect blaster bolts, even deflect glancing, although, although not direct, lightsaber thrusts. Unfortunately, it's said that the uh, armor, when powered up, is rather uncomfortable and becomes more so the longer it's on. Plus, I'm sure it uses lots of power, so it's only a temporary thing, you know, um, for combat. The armor itself is quite expensive and time-consuming to produce, so that's, only, that's why I really only have these eight special guardy guards of the uh, Snoky have it. But again, uh, I know the 5th and 6th guards had this ch big chopper, funnily enough. Even though it's big, it was actually one of the guys holding one of these big choppers that died first in the battle. And then, of course, we have one more guy. This is the one from the guard pack, same as the Senate we looked at. He has these dual arbor blades, same deal as before. They have compact power cells and uh, can cut through things because of their charged blades. Again, I I presume that these are originally meant to trim hedges. But, you know, they guard the, well, I was going to say Emperor, but the Snoky uh, Supreme Leader. That's what he calls himself. But, you know, that's probably not mostly what they do. I bet they mostly do gardening. I think that's what it is. His His excuse for giving them melee weapons was he knew one day they would fight lightsaber wielders, but I think it's just mostly because he really liked his pretty gardens flowers. This guy seems like he could do a pretty good by chopping up. And what's kind of neat about this weapon, even this guy, even though this guy only comes with the, the two, they do, I think it's this direction, that's the other. There we go. Yeah, they only they only really want to peg in one way, which is good. And they can make a single staff weapon here. And it's kind of curved in a neat arcing way. Kind of reminds me of a smaller version of that uh, staff that Carcanus, Carnajax we looked at earlier, had. And we see these in the show, in the movie. I think these were used by the 7th and 8th guards. And they can break them up to go into two blades. I kind of like them that way better. That's why I have it in his hands. This guy has yet another helmet. Uh, this one I'm not a fan of, really. It's like he's got a brick on his head. Or, I don't know. He looks like a chef. He looks like he, he's the... Yeah, these were definitely just like Snoke's gardeners and chefs. <laughs> The armor itself is very uh, oriental, although some of the helmets look kind of European. They've got these uh, moving things here. And this guy, for whatever reason, has cloth, which is kind of cool and not cool at the same time. There, there's, there's pros and cons. But at least it makes him a little different than the helmet. He's probably the most different figure. So, um, yeah, these are the eight, or at least representing the eight elite Praetorian guards. Don't have to really talk much about what they did after Snoke died, because they immediately threw themselves into battle and died too. Someone really should have told them they were going up against Vader's grandson and uh, a Mary Sue. That just was not a winning combo for them. I do like the design, though. It is much like the Imperial Guard, although more fighty, more military, more combat-oriented. I think it's because they're not completely covered in robes. I think it would have been neat if they at least had a, a blaster on their hip, though, because choppy things are cool and maybe good against force wielders, but um, yeah, nothing replaces a good old blaster, as Han would say. Plus, they weren't force users themselves. I do like that they articulated these uh, shoulder pads. In fact, they, they can pop off completely if you need to. They're all little kind of pegged in ball joints. So those were the uh, kind of ceremonial personal guards. But what about more 
you know, field combat guard troops. The First Order Executioner. At first I wasn't going to pick this guy because I kind of thought it was silly. But I'm kind of glad I did now. And I just waited until I found a good deal on it. Because uh, he's another kind of exclusive store thing. Standard st uh, First Order trooper body. Nothing special there. Although he does have some black paint, black markings, which I can't see, but presumably you can if I'm pointing the camera right, which is an if, I know. The idea was these were pulled from regular ranks and given special armor that hid their identities, and they would kind of do guard duties and, if necessary, execution duties for primarily disloyal First Order troopers, not enemies themselves. The notion is taken from the old executioner from Middle Ages when he would wear the black hoods and robes so people didn't know, at least in theory, who was doing the job. Now, he did not come with a blaster, but he has the spot on his leg because it's the standard mold, so I gave him a standard First Order pistol because they do mention blasters. Well, Phasma does, so presumably they would have some. Now his big deal here is his uh, BL-155 laser axe. This is a lot cooler of a accessory than I thought it would be. I knew that we could remove the kind of arcing electricity lasery on it. We've seen that on several other figures now. But when you remove it, actually all four prongs hinge and fold down. So you can display it either open with the electricity arcing, or not just off, but off in its closed position. The only thing that would have made it cooler is that they put hoops somewhere where you could store it on his leg or back. But yeah, aside from having his ID turned off and all that, he's a standard stormtrooper and everyone served the role. But they were kind of, uh, yeah, guards and enforcers, so I thought he fit here. Plus, when I did the stormtrooper video, I didn't have him yet, but once a version came up for a good price I picked him up but yeah the little axe thing is kind of neat I just wish he did come with some kind of blaster but since I now know this is a multi-part accessory there's a one two three four five six seven parts I kind of understand maybe why they didn't because you know he's still a normal priced figure I think they were regularly 20 bucks I found him for 15 figured why not free shipping with that, let's move on to our last figure today. Meet the Sith Trooper. Well, I would say he's the Sovereign Protector, but we'll start off with the basic Sith Troopers. The whole Palpatine coming back thing is ridiculous, but the Trooper's kind of neat. He was inspired by, both in the universe and the real world, the Death Trooper and kind of the Clone Troopers and the Guards all rolled into one. In universe, his armor is supposed to be multi-layered. It has better energy dissipation. It's got a body glove underneath, so it's more resistant to blaster fire and other impacts. Yet it's much more flexible, thinner. You can tell he's a, he's a thinner figure, and he has newer technology built in. Like he has an atmosphere sensor on his shoulder here. Some people think it's a spotlight. It's supposed to be a sensor. His helmet has a. Uh, real targeting data built in for his weapons. It also transmits to his commanders. They uh, operated in legions of 10,000 and then in squads of 10 broken into three fire teams. So These were kind of designed to take what were considered the most desirable elements from the clones and the stormtroopers and the first order stormtroopers. They weren't clones themselves but um, they were usually inducted as children, either voluntarily through the Sith Eternal, because they serve the Sith Army, or kind of the whole kidnapped child thing from First Order. Either way, they uh, were strictly controlled for height, weight, skill. But basically, these were the ones that were brainwashed. Before this, pretty much everyone here, while they might be fanatically loyal, they had free will. These guys received... Uh, Kaminoan clone technology that they used to train the clones during the Clone War. Flash uh, memory, flash training, and uh, they were 
pretty much fully loyal, even if they didn't want to be. But they did have really good armor. <laughs> and uh, they were well trained for all that. On his hip, he has the standard SDW-48 blaster. When the stock was on, it was called a rifle. When the stock was taken off, it was called a carbine. It um, has a high rate of fire, pretty good cooling, advanced targeting that links to the helmet again, and it can even launch uh, projectile bolts. Uh, there's a little kind of sub thing under the main barrel. So basically, a space age grenade launcher, for being honest. But I gave him the uh, SP. B-50, which is a part ceremonial, part combat weapon used by the Sovereign Protectors, who are the actual guards for Palpy. This weapon doubles as both a blade and it can launch blaster bolts. There's a little barrel on top here. And then a blade below. So that's kind of neat, I thought. A dual purpose. And again, it's meant to be kind of ceremonial and utilitarian. This is the uh, the pack version of the Sith Trooper. He wasn't much more, and you got like three extra weapons. I thought about dragging out the other ones, but they're in a bag, so you'll see them throughout. He comes with a heavy blaster can, and he comes with some uh, clamps that reminds me of uh, Futurama. And he comes with the other major blaster they used that was mostly carried by the Sith Jet Troopers, but... We'll talk about flying troops in another video, and you'll see it then. But they had good equipment, and there were uh, a lot of them. Uh, Palpatine still died. That's kind of the thing here. Guards. Uh, from the very beginning of the Republic, uh, not, not the greatest success record. <laughs> Although at least the Republic Senate Guard lasted for thousands of years. Everything Palpy tried, uh, and Snoke for that matter, not, not, not so long. No, I do think this figure is kind of neat. It's... Uh, I just thought it would probably be a red painted First Order Stormtrooper, but no, it's totally new. And it does feel kind of thinner, more flexible, lighter. So there is definitely that Death Trooper element to it, that elite. And I do like how the newer ones, the First Orders, have the clip on their leg for their weapon, because that makes sense. It could be held on by magnetic force and then released through control. It makes perfect sense vis-a-vis -vis a holster, which is kind of old school tech. But yeah, the Sovereign Protectors were definitely the last of the guard, and uh, at least Palpy let them fight this time. Less ceremonial, more combat-oriented, although it's possible they had ceremonial robes. So that's my kind of little guard lineup here. And we end where we begin. So uh, which ones do you like? Do you like the, the blue versions for the Republic? Well, the Senate, I should say. Do you like the traditional Royal Guard from Return of the Jedi and the variants of it? What do you think about the uh, Shock Troopers, be it uh, the clone or the Stormtrooper version? Or maybe you're like me and you actually do like the Elite Praetorian Guards kind of design concept and look. And I have to admit, like I said, the Executioner, his little weapon here is a lot more interesting as a figure than I thought it would be. I only picked him up because I found him cheap. Kind of the same thing goes for the Sith guy in red. Although I did get the version that came with like five weapons, so that's kind of neat that you can configure him. I don't know. They find... Yeah, they find it interesting for me. They amuse me. They relax me. So I hope this video amused and relaxed you too. You, not, not the band. This is Misha. Catch you very soon. Next time.